Worry. Are you a worrier? Do you know someone who's a worrier? What is worry anyway? I recognize that I come from a whole family of warriors. And when my, I have really, really wise kids. They're all grown up adults now. But I'll tell you what, your kids are smart. Even when they're little toddlers, you pay attention to them so you can garner their wisdom to supplement yours because I guarantee it will. When my son was a teenager, he came upon me. I don't know what I was worrying about. I was worrying about something. And he said, Mom, why do you worry? Now listen to what he went on to say. He said, if you can do something about it, do it. And if you can't, what's the point of worrying? That's pretty darn wise, don't you think? Because it's the truth. What does worry do for you? It does nothing to further your calming down. It does nothing to resolve the problem. You know why you worry? Because somehow you got a mishmash in your mind, not your heart, in your mind telling you you're doing something, you're taking action, you're not just sitting back by the act of worry? Does that really make even the tiniest bit of sense? Think about it. What is your heart telling you about it? When a situation comes up, you have a choice. You can take action immediately. Or, like so many people do, you can pretend it doesn't exist and not take action and not blame yourself for not taking action. Or, you can worry. Now the thing is, each of us has energy. And it doesn't just sit inside us. It goes out to everyone around us. I lived in Idaho for 10 years. And in our town, we had the most phenomenal mayor. The things that she did to grow our community. And as a matter of fact, we were rated number one best place to live in the whole USA because of her leadership as mayor. And I would go to her and I would talk with her about my going in to talk with her staff about this whole issue of people don't recognize whatever kind of mood they're in. They might think they're keeping it to themselves, but it's in their energy, it's going out, it's impacting everybody. And it could be really helpful to set up some kind of sounding board so when people come in in the first place to work, there's somebody who listens to them so they can get rid of all the garbage. It's otherwise, they're going to tuck away inside, only it's not going to stay inside because it's going to be in their energy impacting everybody in the room. And she was all gung-ho to get that program going. And she said, speak to my manager. It's happened twice. I speak to the manager, and he says, no, not interested. The mayor says, yes, this is good. And her manager says, no, not interested. So I never got to go in and make a difference for them. The thing is, there's no way your energy isn't impacting everyone around you. Let me give you an interesting example. Something that I've told you, I see this phenomenal chiropractor, and she was noticing that I'm not standing with my weight balanced on both legs. And I said, and she was the first person and only person who noticed that. And I said, yeah, I noticed that started happening about a month ago. And then I noticed my daughter doing it. And I didn't talk to her about it, but she was doing it. I had picked it up in her energy. And then when I recognized I had been doing it for a few weeks, I didn't take it out of nowhere. 
I kind of, because it was in her energy, even when I wasn't with her and we were 15 miles apart, I picked that up because there's no such thing as time or distance. It doesn't exist. So here I was standing with all my weight on one foot and I'm looking at her and I'm saying, wow, I do that too. How come you do that? And she explained to me why she is a dancer does it. I didn't know why I was doing it, except I picked up the pattern from her energy that my subconscious mind noticed, and I took it on. Everything that's going on in your world and in your life is happening invisibly to you. Be aware. Pay attention to your environment to everything in your environment, but don't pay attention by listening to your commentator. What's your commentator? It's a little voice in your head right now saying, little voice, what little voice? If she has a little voice, I'm changing channels right now. That's the little voice. And that's why I call it the commentator. Because you don't even listen to a word I'm saying. You're listening to that little voice tell you about its interpretation of what I'm saying. Whether or not it agrees with what I'm saying. And if it doesn't agree and doesn't want you to hear it, it will tell you things like, Gee, you got some shopping you got to do for dinner. Gee, you got to plan this weekend dinner party for the weekend for your guests coming. And the big guns, when it pulls it out, it says, I already know that, which it doesn't. And those are very disempowering words. I know that. But the other thing it will do, it will cause you to feel like either you have to go to the bathroom so you're up and out of the way, or you get sleepy. In which case it may tell you you're sleepy because you're bored. Stop listening to your ego mind who's acting as a commentator who is controlling you. Controlling what you're thinking, what you're observing or not observing. It wants to stay in control because it knows if you become savvy, it's going to go bye-bye. You get to be in charge of you, but you got to do that consciously. You got to do it with awareness, with conscious awareness. A really great way to do that if you've never done this before, I don't know how old the book is, but I'm going to recommend it to you. If you haven't read it, I don't care how many times you have read it, go back, listen to it again. Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. Why is there power in the now? Everything that happens, I mean, actually, happens, happens now, and now, and now. Past does not exist. Your past is your interpretation of your memories. That happened, all made up, not real, doesn't exist unless you choose to make it exist, in which case, once again, it's all made up. Same thing when you're thinking about the future. All made up. Will it ever happen that way? Maybe or maybe not, but the fact is you gotta take the actions now. What you're doing now and today, that's what's creating your future. You wanna live now and his book. As a matter of fact, you know that there's always a gift for you from Audible, where you can follow my link and get 30 days of free trial, including a download of your choice. And every week I've got a download I recommend. And this week it is definitely Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. 
it's a series of questions that people ask and he responds. I don't care how many times you've read it, go through, read it, listen to it again so you can live in the now. And when you live in the now, there isn't anything to worry about. Because to worry about something, you have to take on that something is wrong. What if it isn't really wrong, but what if it's different than you expect so that you'll notice it? We don't notice things in our life until we go into crisis. Think about it. When do you really take action? You can be talking about how much you want to change year after year after year ad nauseum. But nothing happens until you fall into a crisis. And if you can move out of the worry, which will just keep you deeper and deeper and deeper in that crisis, you will change. And that's why I tell you, change happens instantly. I mean, it was like that. In an instant, like clicking your fingers, that's how fast change happens. It's a matter of making the decision, taking the action right then. But what takes people so long to change is getting ready, preparing themselves, deciding it's okay to change. Because when you make that change, first thing your mind wants to do is get you to change back. First thing your family and friends want you to do is get you to change back. Because, heck, they don't want to have to change to be in relationship to you. And if you're different, they're going to have a choice. Change to respond to you as you are now or drop out of your life, period. So what are you going to do next time something comes up? How are you going to look at it differently? So you can choose to see that, oh, it's not really something to worry about. It's something I can act on. Or at the very least, act on your feelings and your interpretations of the event. I'm Allie Beerman, and I thank you so much for joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and mind. Remember to take advantage of the Audible offer. You see, all these links will be in the show notes. And as I said before, I recommend Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. Join our Facebook group where you can make new friends. You can get some extra material that I put in there. And you can ask questions. And an even cooler way to ask questions, you know, it takes a whole lot to do this podcast every week. I do it because, truthfully, it's the most important thing in my life. My spirituality, the fact that I am an ordained metaphysical minister, is the focus of my life. And if I didn't live from this energy, I don't think I'd feel there's a point to my life. And that's why I do the podcast. And when you support the podcast, I get to continue doing it. And your support gives you the opportunity to be on a live Zoom call with me every month. So I ask you to join us, to support us, and also share. Share the show with two friends guarantee there are some people in your life who are a little confused about why their life looks the way it does and what they can do to make it come out differently. You can always go to our show page where you can listen to or watch any episode and we have, what, 133 episodes now. I remind you the most important thing you do for you. So remember, 
You come here in this lifetime to experience joy and love. And so my message to you is always in joy, capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Absolutely nothing about your life, in your life, happens outside of your body, mind, spirit. It's not possible. Because the nerves, the endings, the interpretations of what your senses bring to you, they're all electrical, electromagnetic pulses that go in. And it's that body, mind, spirit that interprets it, changes it into what you feel, see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. I look forward to seeing you here next time.